Hey, I'm back, and today I want to talk about Andy Timmons' tone. I love Andy Timmons' tone, so I thought I would do a tutorial about it. It took me a while because it's really hard to replicate, but finally somebody requested it, so I thought, you know, I'll give it a shot. I'll see what I can do. So, as always, I'm going to use S Gear 2. Let's open it up here. The bottom's all messed up. Let me try that again. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see here, if you look at the different settings for the bass, middle, and treble, I just got these off Mesa Boogie's YouTube page. So, you can copy those yourself. It should get pretty close. Uh, and even here with the presence, let me turn this on so you can hear it. Let me turn the effects off so you can hear exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Bridge pickup. So you can hear with the bridge pickup, it's distorting. With the neck pickup, it's not. You kind of want that that tone where if you hit it really hard, you can hear some overdrive. But if you don't, you don't hear too much overdrive there. That's, I think, the sweet spot, at least for me. Uh, one thing is I oftentimes like to use my humbucker and split it. Because Andy Timmons uses these cruiser pickups, which are humbuckers, but they sound more like single coils. It's really strange. So it has kind of like the bottom of a humbucker, but the top end of a single coil, which I haven't heard in too many other pickups. So that's really unique. But I think you can get closer if you use single coils or at least try to split your humbucker. So let me do that. And now I don't have enough gain, so I need to turn this up a bit. Turn this up a bit. So that's getting closer. That's close to what I want. So now I need to take this, turn on this reverb. I'm just using a spring reverb here to give it more of a ambiance and kind of that vintage vibe. So let's hear that. Actually, I'll do it first with no reverb. Now you can hear it with reverb. You can use any type of reverb. I used a spring here, but I think you'll be okay if you use a room reverb or even a plate reverb. I'm also using, as a cabinet, I'm using these own hammer impulse responses. I'm using Vintage 30, which is what I believe Andy Timmon uses with his Lone Star. And that's the type of tone I'm trying to get here. I used one 2x12 and one, I have a, was it another 2x12 there? I actually want a 4x12. Let me go in here, look at. Own hammer, 4x12, where is it? Here's a good one, I'll try this. There we go. Slightly different, but I don't know. It makes me feel better doing that. Anyways, so let's go on to the delays, which I think is the real heart of this sound. So you see I have the delays set here. I have one at 400, one at 377. I don't think you have to be exact, but somewhere between... One needs to be set at around 400 and one around like 350 to 380 to get that stereo sound. You see I have one going completely to the left, one going to completely to the right. You can see the mix, I guess, fairly high. Have the feedback at about three. One important thing is have the tone control rolled down. These are supposed to be like vintage echoes. So if it has that really uh, crystalline uh, high end, it's not going to sound right. Roll the tone off of that. Uh, and the other thing is you need modulation with the delays. If there's no modulation, it's not going to get that coursing sound, and it's not going to get that really lovely shimmer. So here, I'll let you hear it now with the delays on. I'm sure you can hear that uh, shimmer. It sounds kind of like a chorus. Uh, if you turn it up too high like this, the depth up, it sounds terrible. You hear that, you don't want that, so keep it low. I like to keep the depth at around like 8 and maybe like 6 or so. I think anything between like 1 or one and 0 0.5 will probably sound good. So let me play this through with something I recorded earlier. 
Uh, this is maybe a clip from Andy Timmons Gone. So I just record this quickly. It's not a perfect rendition, but hopefully it'll give you some idea how it sounds. <laughs> I apologize for that hiss. Unfortunately, you, splitting my humbucker causes a lot of noise there, but hopefully that gives you an idea. If you want a little bit more distortion, you can add that too. I'll go through that so you can hear what it sounds if I add that. <laughs> I think that's fairly close. Unfortunately, I can't get it perfect, but that should give you at least a starting point for your own tone so you can fit it to your guitar. And like I said, I think a lot of his tone is in the cruiser pickup, so if you have those, you'll probably get closer than I'm getting here. But hopefully this is at least a good starting and jumping off point for you. Let me switch to my bridge pickup and do the distorted sound. So if I go to amp B here, you see these are also settings I got from the Mesa uh, website, the YouTube page. So this should give you a somewhat close Andy Timmons sound. <laughs> Okay, so it's fairly distorted as you can hear, but if you pick lightly, you can actually get a fair amount of dynamics out of it. So let me try to demonstrate that for you. So it can clean up if you play lighter, or if you even turn your volume knob down, but Andy Timmons has, was it a, like a treble bleed or something? He has something on his guitar, so when you turn it down, the high end stays there. I don't have that, so it's not going to sound good when I do it, unfortunately, but if you get one, you can have that same type of tone. So, also, this one is a little bit dark. I might actually turn the treble up to get a slightly brighter sound. <laughs> So move that around depending on your guitar. I try to move it until the sound just starts to open up. But hopefully that gives you a good idea on any Timmons Lone Star sound. But my favorite sound is actually a sound from Resolution. So if you've heard Res Revolution, or say Resolution, you know it's actually Marshall's and it's not his Mesa Boogie amplifiers. So let me try to replicate that. If you haven't seen it, check out my video on a new technique for parallel compression. I go over how I do the, how I'm doing this. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm splitting the signal into two different channels. So I have one amp on the left and one amp on the right. Uh, let's see here. I'll open these. I'll show you. Here we go. So here's one. It's based on a Marshall JMP. I'm using Scuffum Steeler, which is like a Marshall amp. Uh, he used a JMP on there, so let me see if I can give you an example of how this sounds. Here we go. That's too loud. Let me switch to the single coil neck pickup. I need to 
turn that down a little bit. It's distorting. A little bit more. Okay. So that's the JMP sound. I have it. Let me switch it here so you can hear it in stereo. So I have these panned left and right because that's what he does on the record, and it gives it more uh, stereo width. You can see the controls here, and I'm using greenbacks instead of the J or the vintage 30s. And the other side is a plexi. Let me switch over to that side so you can hear it. I'll make this stereo. There we go. <laughs> So this is supposed to be like a plexi sound. Let me uh, push this a little bit harder. Okay, so hopefully that has enough gain on it. So basically now what I want to do is I want to use M ratio to blend between them. And so I look here and I want to make sure these two levels are matched okay one side's louder oh, I'm going the wrong way let's try now Okay, that's better. Not quite perfect, but as close as I'm going to get. So that's the basic tone. So now what I want to do is I want to add some effects. So if I look here, TK Delay, I use this example of a, a preset I made. It's called tape delay. I have the one delay time on the left for 400 milliseconds. On the right, 364 milliseconds. I have the depth at 4 milliseconds for the modulation. Uh, right, 8 milliseconds. Different rates. The feedback, 30% for each. I have the wet output is about 15%. And here, I have a filter. I'm cutting off the high end, just like I said. So let's hear this. So that's almost exactly what I want, but another thing I might want to do is use this Valhalla Vintage Verb. And I'm just using Ambience Plate, just like a preset. I set it at about 18%, and hopefully this will get me closer to the sound. Let me play that clip of Gone from before. So here we go. <laughs> So that's basically the tone. It's probably not perfect. Like I said, if you have the pickups, you can get a little bit closer than what I got on here. But hopefully this gives you a basic idea. And for this, if you want a distorted tone, you can use any type of pedal. Unfortunately, there's not a really good match for Andy Timmons' tone. I know he likes to use the Chandler tube driver. Actually, I talked to him in the airport. I saw him randomly about three years ago in the airport. I was like, is that Andy Timmons? And it was. And I talked to him and I, when I told him my name was Chandler, he's like, ah, oh, like the guitar pedal. And he said he really liked that pedal. I think he said he liked the three knob version. So I was really surprised about that. But super nice guy, amazing player, etc. But unfortunately, we can't replicate that here. So what I tried to use was 
this. Uh, it's by Ignite Stomps. I'll leave a link below to this. And basically, this is like a tube screamer, but it has some other additions like a fat switch, asymmetrical switch, etc. So let me try to play it with uh, it on zero drive and then move it up. <laughs> the drive up and the level down move the tone control down too let's see how this sounds now let me switch to my bridge pickup Unfortunately, this sounds kind of thin. It's that tube screamer sound, which isn't really the Andy Timmons sound. There's other things you can try, like let's see here. This soft drive GV. This is a really cool pedal. It's like a Marshall Governor, which is not exactly what he uses, but maybe it'll get a little bit closer, I hope. Whoa, that's way too much gain. Turn that down. Turn the level down. Turn the bass up. Treble down a little bit, and let's see how this sounds. Still not quite perfect. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's any pedal in software that nails that tone yet, but hopefully somebody will either make a Chandler tube driver, BB preamp, or the new Andy Timmons GHS pedal in software form. Until then, experiment yourself and see if you can get a little bit closer. I hope this was close enough for you. I'm sorry, I can't get it exact. I don't have Andy Timmons guitar and... Obviously, I'm not Andy Timmons. I can't really play like him. But I hope this gave you some ideas and some you know paths you can go on to get a tone that's closer. And hopefully, this will you know propel you to make something. And if you do something good, tell me about it. So if you find some uh, something I did wrong that you think you can do better, tell me about it. Leave it below. And if you'd like me to request somebody else's tone... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. These are kind of hard for me. But I, I'll, I'll think about doing it. So leave that below. And if you like this, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, see you.